Hello everybody, my name is Robert Hatcher. I'm a data scientist, songwriter, and the founder of Origin. I like to describe Origin as Carta for Music Publishing Royalties. We help music companies manage the equity in their publishing portfolio, while also giving them the infrastructure to scale their business like the major corporations such as Sony, Warner, Universal. And the crux of our business is centered around this thing called a split sheet. And the music ver uh, it's the music version of a cap table. It outlines the songwriter and their percentage of equity within a song. However, there's a billion dollars that goes unclaimed every single year due to one missing and incorrect information within these split sheets. The reason why this becomes so difficult is because it could take months to collect the proper data as well as the equity between all the songwriters. Second, once you collect that data, you have to sit and you have to register this information manually with royalty collection agencies in every single country. And you can imagine how redundant that could become, especially when you're talking about a catalog full of music. And then third, my favorite is what the music industry is known for, is theft and disputes. So say me and Asher are about to make the next great hit record. We decide that we're going to split it 50-50, but then she forgot, or what happens a lot of time, she wants to have a sense of leverage, meaning she goes and registers 60%. So what happens is the royalty collection agencies will say, well, you can't claim 110% of a record. And what Asher will say, well, if you want to resolve that, then you need to pay me an extra $10,000. This happens all the time. So what Origin does, when a song is being created, we automatically upload into the user dashboard. Our patent technology creates a split sheet for the entire group, along with the metadata for all the songwriters who are participating. The only thing the users have to do is agree what their equity percentage are. And what we do is instead of allowing every single artist to register individually, we're a one-stop shop and allow artists and their publishing companies to register around the world at a click of a button. No more inputting manual data into these systems. No more uh, having the risk to actually uh, make a mistake and lose your royalties. And that's probably been the biggest uh, milestone that we've hit. No other startup uh, and no other company. There's only one other company in the United States that allows publishing companies and artists to register globally, which is very important because music is a global consumption. If you're making a song today, there's a great chance that it can be streamed in Canada, UK, and et cetera. And the second thing that we do, especially for small, medium-sized business companies, is we manage the accounting for their entire catalog. So we collect all these royalties uh, for their entire catalog. We automate the accounting so we can distribute the payments to their artists that are on their roster as well as to the publishing, excuse me, to the publishing company. I love it so much, I almost got choked up. <laughs> And this is why we're targeting publishing companies. So by year 2026, this will be a $74 billion industry. What's interesting is the majors own about 60%, but half of their revenue is coming from these small publishers who are outsourcing the registration as well as the accounting part of the operations to the major majors. By us actually automating that process, we give these small, medium-sized businesses the uh, capability to actually scale their operations so they can do what they really want to do, which isn't being stagnant, putting in paperwork and accounting. Music publishing companies make money by trying to find ways to license their music to television and et cetera. So this gives them an opportunity to focus more on that. When it comes to our team, uh, me, Kevin, and Edgar have all have music experience combined about uh, 30 years in the industry. Um, Edgar and myself have technical experience. Uh, he's worked for McKinsey and Company uh, as well as Amazon Web Music. Uh, and our, when it comes to our advisor, uh, Adam Parnes, he is the former global head of music publishing at Spotify and Pandora. Now when it comes to our raise and what we're asking for, uh, we're raising a seed round of $2 million. What we want to do is bring in our dev team in-house so we can manage customer support and our product releases a lot more efficiently. And then second, uh, we're in the process of sales. Uh, we have about, I want to say, I think around $8 million in our sales pipeline uh, currently. We have a lot of great connections in the Atlanta area and the Houston area. Uh, what we'd like to do is expand that uh, so, we can, so by the end of next year, we can get a catalog of about 5,000 songs and a little bit under a million dollars in revenue. And when it comes to traction, some of the biggest milestones that we've hit, we've been granted this patent that allows us to automa automatically create these uh, split sheets or these equity tables. Something that I'm super excited for anybody that's interested in Web3 is this also covers uh, Web3 and NFTs. And what that basically means is, in the future, artists will be able to sell their music in the form of an NFT. The reason why that is so important is because the current process today when it comes to collecting these publishing royalties, artists only take home 12% of the revenue 
and it takes about six months to collect these royalties. By being able to sell your music in the form of NFT, artists can collect 96% of the revenue instantly at the point of sale. And by us actually having the equity percentages already uh, on our platform, we can implement that data when the point of sale occurs. The second uh, is revenue. You know, as, as that's very important to us. Uh, as we're in the process where we're trying to grow, we've ran a private beta for two months where we had 112 customers and is 750 songs registered. It's generating about $20,000 for us. The biggest record uh, is a record by Drake, uh, but now we're actually um, closed the beta so we can collect, um, so we can help and pivot the company to service more publishing companies. And last, our biggest milestones is the ca capacity to actually collect royalties worldwide. As I said, no other startup in this experience, in this industry has been able to accomplish that feat, and it feels great to be the first one to do so. And I'll open it up. Again, my name is Robert Hatcher. Thank you for your time. I'll open it up for questions. So there's a dude in Philly who I met years ago um, who uh, has an incredibly successful venture firm. And it was based on a single thesis. And that is, I'm going to go find software companies that are doing, uh, making software uh, for people who only operate in spreadsheets. And um, this is kind of, it reminds me of that. It, you've got a, a large and complex kind of back office process, this kind of registration process. You've got the work that will go into kind of the structure, the capitalization, as you, you indicated, the cap table. And then you've got kind of the collections process. So it's a kind of, a, I think it's a fascinating kind of back office for this. It's a real problem, for sure. So I like the problem statement. W what, I, what I would like to see in a pitch like this is uh, more on product definition and use of proceeds against product. I haven't been a software engineer in a, for a long time. I, it sounds, maybe it sounds simple. I can see how this could be a very, very challenging um, piece of software to not just to build, but also to maintain and support on a global basis and scale as things change. Uh, there's a financial component to it, all these global registrations, country to country. And so um, I love the way that you set up the business and the business problem. It looks obvious. I'd like to see a little bit more on the product and what makes it unique. Way more on the protection that you hit at the end, because protecting this idea is hugely important, in my view. Um, and then a little bit about the customer. So you know, I want to know who the customer is. I mean, you kind of told us, right, these middle publishing groups. But who are they? How many of them are they? How many songs a year do they put out you know, through their artists? Like, Give me some economics on who they are so I know what your target customer is. And then maybe some idea of you know, revenue per, per target publisher in that sector. Hey, if we sign one of these up on an annualized basis, that might generate x. I can get to the numbers a little bit better that way, and then I can feel like I can get a handle on, OK, what's the real investment on the software side and product here to be able to, to really keep the system kind of where it needs to be and potentially innovate into, like you said, NFTs and that kind of thing. So I might like to see a slightly more, more technical kind of pitch for this. But I love the idea. I think the opportunity is great. And frankly, there's just always huge opportunity when you're, when you're kind of automating and, and simplifying things that are otherwise really difficult, onerous business processes like this. So I think it's super cool. Yeah. That was a great presentation, man. I have two questions. Um, well, I have two. I'm going to start with two questions. <laughs> um, could, you, could you talk a little bit about what protections the utility patent affords your company? Because that was my first mm -hmm. question, too. Yeah. So the uh, patent is about uh, autom the automation of creating music publishing agreements with metadata from the users. And actually, this week, um, so the creation of the split sheet. Yep. So the creation of the split sheet with the metadata uh, in them. And we've actually just uh, received a, a second patent last week, which uh, um, for all my software developers uh, out there, we use something called like GitHub, which is, uh, allows us to write code and identify where a specific piece of code um, was written and by who. Sure. So we actually have a patent, although our patent last week and the, the way that they work together, it allows us to identify uh, the artists and their recording and their contributions based on their online, um, it's called an online doll, but their recording application on their computer. So that way we could track who's contributing to the record. And then uh, the patent that we were granted last year allows us to create that publishing agreement with that data uh, as well. And then we can make sure that we can create a, an, an accurate publishing agreement. So that way we're not missing any information in terms of who participated in the record and what their equity is. So so I would say your pitch back to you, and I would do, I'm about to do a terrible job. Oh, I apologize. Please, please. Right, is automated creation of a split sheet, 
and then massive integration with all these entities in the world, right? Okay, good. To what extent uh, is the integration with all these organizations in the world, how, how hard was that? How protectable is that? Like, you know, like, because the creation of the split sheet, I get it, yep. sounds cool. Feels like the integration would be, like that's the hard part to copy, yeah? And when you talk about the integration, are you talking about the royalty collection? So, territories or yeah. whatever it is? Yeah. yeah. So that, no, that, that was definitely difficult. Uh, How long have you been working on that? That part alone probably took us about 10 months, uh, 10 months to set up uh, because every publishing is complicated. Uh, publishing is actually a combination of two different types of royalties, which is collected by two different types of royalty collection agencies. Every territory has its own uh, agencies for each license. Uh, so what we had to do is uh, for about 10 months, certain countries have reciprocal agreements. Uh, so there's certain royalty collection agencies, like for example in the UK, that uh, collect royalties for other territories like such in Africa and Eastern so you Europe. connect with agencies who represent these territories. Yeah. How many agencies? Total, a little bit over, ag agencies I would probably say maybe a little bit over 100. Around, so around the world. Yeah, oh. around the world. Okay. And then my other question is this. So could you go back to the pyramid slide? Right? Hasn't hypnosis already ruined this? Mm -hmm. Haven't they already financialized all these assets and screwed it up? Like, are, are you, aren't you too late? No, not at all. Uh, especially- They're totally ruined. Yeah, I, yeah. I would say especially with these two, because what happens is major corporations are actually starting to act more like VCs, right? If you think about the music industry 10, 15 years ago, the major corporations, the record labels, they manage distribution because you need them to cover the cost of manufacturing physical CDs. They, met, they uh, managed marketing because the only way to market yourself was through television and radio. And then they also managed the uh, production because you needed a studio to actually record and create the music. What happened with streaming, what happened with the internet, what happened with social media is all those avenues got disrupted. So what happens is there's no more, I'm going to bring in an artist, develop them, put them kind of in my pipeline when they can release music and control that. Now you have artists that are creating music, putting it on YouTube, starting to get thousands of views. And now you have uh, record labels who are like, well, let me find the next hot artist. I'm just gonna get them, and then I'm gonna try to bring them into the fold that way, because now I already find an artist that has traction. The problem is by the time they find those artists, it's very messy. Uh, both for the artists, uh, especially if they're signed to an independent, uh, they don't have the infrastructure or they haven't been keeping up with their splits. They don't know who owns the rights, who was the previous contributors and et cetera. So our goal is to give them the infrastructure to manage that on a lower level. So then at least for the independent artists and the independent smaller publishing companies, when a major approaches them, they'll have more leverage because they'll have their rights in order as well as their royalties. I, I think that, that uh, I like this a lot, but I, I would love to see you be pitching with a, a CTO. I, I think this is a very potentially complicated piece of software, which provides opportunity, because if you can get That's it good. right, the barriers to entry are massive. Having chased some pieces of software like this that are like loosely coupled systems that don't natively kind of or inherently talk to each other, you end up having a tremendous kind of just ongoing um, support and integration and reintegration right. expense on a team associated with keeping these agencies and systems right. all connected all the time. And I want to make sure that the economics of price for you and, and what you earn based on your relationships are going to outpace the development effort and the energy so, that goes into the technology. Yeah, and like, and so as, as you know, Right, there are huge private equity interests that are financializing creative content like this, right? And they, it seems their interests uh, would be less well, are, are misaligned with yours, right? They would like, hypnosis, if they knew everything that you were doing, they would say, Robert, cut it out, right? I mean, wouldn't they? I, the pushback that I would have on that is so when it comes to acquisition, which is a really hot space for uh, publishing catalogs, what what actually ties up a lot of acquisitions is so again you yeah, 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 okay, yeah. you have multiple people like so for example uh, I went through an accelerator with Comcast right and they talked about how they put millions of dollars in escrow because you may want to license a song uh, by Beyonce but like her last album had 24 songwriters right. now it's easy to get in contact with Beyonce but little Jerry from Wisconsin is it easy to get in contact with Beyonce <laughs> really everybody I, 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 would, I would like to talk yeah. to her 
<laughs> yeah. Um, Your Comcast uh, is, is, but the reason why is because you know she's signed to Universal. Sure. She's signed to a company with people that you can get in contact with. Yeah. But the other producers who, who worked on it, who may have been a small time player, who don't have a big publishing right. person, it's hard to get in contact with them. So our big, and this is part of our big vision, is by having the equity and all the rights holder, what we then have is a database. So then for people who want to do acquisitions in the private equity space, they want to acquire a catalog, they won't have to worry about some small player holding up the deal because they have a certain percentage and they can't find who that person is. Got it. That's good. So, so, are, so, is could, there, so theoretically, you could ally with them. Yeah. yeah but. Are you, is there a sneaky, like, treasury? No, I don't mean sneaky, like, bad no. sneaky. I mean, like, <laughs> is, there a, is there a treasury kind of, play in here? Like if you're talking about on a, a large scale collecting a bunch of royalties and then dispersing it, you know, monthly or quarterly, is part of the back office of this thing really kind of a, a banking thing where there's fees and interest and stuff to be earned? Or does the money move in and out too quickly for that? No, the, the money definitely doesn't move out uh, quickly. It's, it's, it's a very slow process. It, it depends because certain publishing companies have different structures such as uh, commissions, uh, that they take from the artists. Uh, there's certain plays that we can get into, but that's actually the process that we're in now is, is understanding that the variance of that customer in that segment because you could be a big office that's managing uh, 15 artists or you could be a smaller office that's managing eight artists, but those eight artists are doing big numbers doing the streaming. Right. So we're actually kind of in that space now to get a little bit better understanding. I would understanding. encourage you to look at that as a potential. We, we ran, a, I ran a large payments business and uh, the majority of the money came from sitting on the deposits. Um, and, and the reason why we're sitting on them, not to delay, but to, for financial accuracy and accounting purposes. And so if you have a legitimate business reason to aggregate prepayments that are uh, you know, kind of due to be dispersed on some agreed schedule, there's a, there's a banking back end that can be very profitable and can drive you know, incremental revenue for the business that gets really interesting really fast when the numbers get big. Yeah. You did great, Robert. Yeah. It's a good pitch. Yeah.